Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. With one week until Thanksgiving, Governor Gretchen Whitmer delivering one final warning as cases continue to spike across the state. A Macomb County family has their two Pomeranians stolen what the family was doing when the two dogs were taken. As Michigan's Senate Majority Leader and House Speaker jet off to Washington, D.C. for a meeting with President Trump, tonight Michigan's election results are once again getting national attention. Michigan is one of the states where the president's legal team is claiming voting fraud, but those claims have found no success in court and no clerks have found any evidence to prove it. Let's get to Mara McDonald following the story live downtown. Mara, all of this uh, was kicked off this week when the two Republican members of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers initially refused to certify the election results. Devin, that's right, but after hours of a very heated meeting, those two GOP members did vote to certify Wayne County's election results. Now, they would like to rescind. Through a PR firm aligned with the Trump campaign, those two canvassers, Monica Palmer and William Hartman, signed affidavits saying they want to rescind their vote. But a rather large problem for them is there is no legal mechanism to do so. Looks like there maybe was some pressure, they felt pressure to just come across with a different answer after they cast their vote. And uh, there's no basis in the law for it. Their vote will remain uh, as it is. Who does a lot of election and municipal law claiming you want to rescind your vote? Legally, non-starter. Here it really is just PR. Now the big question is what happens at the State Board of Canvassers on Monday. That board is also comprised of two Democrats and two Republicans. Who thinks there will not be a partisan split in the vote? Uh, given this small discrepancies that are being discussed here. Uh, the answer is very strongly likely no. Uh, the Board of Canvassers will certify this. But if the State Board of Canvassers does deadlock, there are legal remedies for a court to force certification. In the midst of all of this, the president has asked Michigan Senate Majority Leader and House Speaker to meet with him in the Oval Office tomorrow. There has been some suggestion from a few GOP activists that the leaders of both chambers could change the state's electors. Senate Majority Leader Shirky is already on record saying that is a no-go. All the meetings in the world, though, can't um, take away from the fact that Joe Biden won Michigan by over 150,000 votes. Back here live, I think it's important to point out that I have reached out to both the Senate Majority Leader's Office and the House Speaker's Office. We have gotten no official comment from either of them about this meeting with the President tomorrow or what the topics to be discussed are. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Let's see what we can glean in the morning. All right, Mara. Now, the state is reporting 7,592 new cases of the coronavirus over the last 24 hours. Today's numbers include 134 new deaths, with 73 of those deaths coming in the past 24 hours. Tonight's headlines, the U.S.-Canada border closure has been extended through until at least December 21st to all non-essential travel. Michigan's chief medical executive, Dr. Janae Caldoun, says hospitals across the state on average are 79 percent full. Both Dr. Caldoun and Governor Whitmer are urging against Thanksgiving gatherings next week. By not gathering with people outside of your household this Thanksgiving, it is an act of kindness and love. Bad decisions made at Thanksgiving will mean people will be mourning the deaths of their loved ones by New Year's. And with case counts continuing to rise across the country, the CDC is now recommending against all travel for the Thanksgiving holiday. Can't blame people for wanting to get their hands on some Slow's barbecue, but their equipment, that's generally off the menu. Popular restaurant in Corktown had its mobile food trailer stolen Wednesday and is now hoping that something will turn so they can get it back. Jason Colthorpe is there tonight. Uh, you can't exactly be inconspicuous hauling something like that away. Exactly, Devin. The trailer is huge, not to mention it has that big locomotive on the side, the Slows logo. That's why the owners don't think this was taken to use as their own food truck. It's probably for what was inside the mobile kitchen. Yeah, it's 26 feet long. It's 10,000 pounds. The Slows mobile food trailer is unmistakable. No, there, there's no hiding it. A good many of you have probably stood in line outside of it at some point in the last five years to order some barbecue. 
but tonight it's missing. Parked it in our uh, our secure lot where it normally lives when we're not using it. Came in two mornings ago and it's not there. It was taken from a fenced in lot just down Michigan Avenue around 2 or 3 a.m. Wednesday. Whoever stole it, it's, you know, Probably somebody with the equipment to do it, and this isn't the first time they've done it. Chef and owner Mike Mativia is hoping it's discovered before it gets stripped. He doesn't think it's likely someone took it to use as their own food truck. I think somebody got that put right into storage and started taking it right apart. Mativia can't pinpoint exactly how much it's worth, but he does know it's an important part of how the restaurant is trying to survive in these difficult times. We're doing everything we can to keep our staff working, keep our guests safe. So it's something like this happens, it's um, to me almost more of an emotional blow than business because it just reminds you that as much as we're all working through this together, there's still people out there who really don't care and they're still going to work against you regardless. So it, it's more of a disappointment in people, you know? Yeah, we know. Restaurants, one of those businesses that just can't catch a break these days. Now, police are looking at some surveillance video from the scene. No word on if that's gleaned any clues, but if you know anything about this or maybe by some chance have seen the food truck, call Detroit police. I'm sure there's some tasty beef brisket in your future. Smoke beef brisket as a reward if you do. We're in Corktown tonight. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Got to believe somebody's seen it, but maybe didn't know that it wasn't supposed to be where it was at the time. All right, Jason, Macomb County will not be home to the headquarters of the United States Space Command. Today, the Department of the Air Force announced the six finalists in Sterling Heights did not make the cut. Sterling Heights was among 24 sites being evaluated. The six finalists include sites in New Mexico, Florida, Nebraska, Alabama, Texas, and Colorado. A final decision on the headquarters location is expected next year. A search is underway after someone tries to burn down an Oakland County business. Surveillance video shows someone pouring lighter fluid on a fire at Express Weight Loss and Wellness on Dixie Highway near Maybe Road in Independence Township. Happened earlier this week. Deputies say three fires were started at the building. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest. A Wisconsin man charged in the plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer will remain in custody. A judge today denied bond to 52-year-old Brian Higgins, one of the 14 men charged in the domestic terrorism plot. Higgins plans to fight extradition to Michigan. A hearing will be held on the matter sometime next month. President-elect Joe Biden calling President Trump the most irresponsible president in American history. His comments coming while the administration refuses to cooperate with the transition and the Trump campaign continues its fight in court to turn around Biden's election win. And I think most of the Republicans I've spoken to, including some of the governors, think this is debilitating. It's not a, it sends a horrible message about who we are as a country. Uh, a Trump campaign, though, suffered another big blow tonight. The hand recount has finished this evening in Georgia, and it shows Biden won that state by more than 12,000 votes, giving him the state's 16 electoral votes. The recount found no widespread fraud or irregularities in the election. Under state law, Georgia is required to certify the election results by tomorrow. A Michigan nonprofit has reached a deal to buy four hydroelectric dams, including the one that failed in Midland. The Four Lakes Task Force says it's buying the Edenville, Sanford, Smallwood and Secord dams from Boyce Hydro. The deal is worth more than $1.5 million. The task force expects to take control of the dams next month. In 2018, it received authority from Midland and Gladwin counties to purchase and maintain the four dams on the Tobacco and Titabawasi rivers. Still ahead, a mother is accused of making her toddler ingest THC from a vape pen. Why she did it and the charges she now faces coming up. Let's check in with Ben. Devin and Kim, how about some more 60s? We'll do it for one more day and then it's back to regular November for the weekend plus some rain too. We'll look at all that coming up. All right, Ben, but first, the Sterling Heights family has their two Pomeranians stolen right out of their car. It's been heartbreaking for us. We are so very devastated where the pups were stolen, also the reward the family is now offering to find them when we come back. 